And now, your official Tiger Bait postgame show with Mike Scarborough and Preston Guy starts now. All right, LSU fans and anybody else that's uh, happened to be lurking tonight. We get a lot of those when LSU drops a football game. People loving the, the uh, uh, particular fan bases in misery. And I'm sure we're going to have some uh, pretty uh, spicy comments, as our buddy buddy Sanji might say on, on our Wednesday night shows. LSU falls Alabama 42-28. to 28, And frankly, it was exactly what we thought it was going to be or what what it could be. Um what did we say all week, two weeks? Uh, LSU could ill afford mistakes. Uh, LSU needed to score on every offensive series. And uh, I, I tell you, uh, when Mason Taylor dropped that key pass in the third period and LSU had that punt, the first time we had seen uh, uh, the punter all night long, uh, I just felt uh, that was probably it. And sure enough, it was. And um, look, I, I will say this. As bad as LSU fans and, and everybody watching that game say the LSU defense is, if you're an Alabama fan and you're watching that game back and forth and, and LSU up uh, scores uh, all up to the third quarter, uh, they were saying the same thing about their defense. And uh, But the difference is um, LSU had no answers, and even when they did, um, you just could ill afford to have any offensive series uh, that didn't produce points. And – even when you got a gift when Reichert misses several field goals and he's uh, with the uh, all-time leading scorer in Alabama football history, um, it, it didn't matter on a game tonight. Now LSU has their third loss of the football season, and uh, and we wait to hear what the uh, future is for Jaden Daniels. Um, more concussion protocol. Is the jaw actually uh, broke? That we don't know. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get some more information tomorrow or Monday. Um, but um, the fact that he went back out, back out there and then came uh, after one play came back out uh, tells you a lot. So uh, prayers for Jaden Daniels and, and hope he's okay. And I know a lot of people are going to want to talk about how that wasn't targeting. Uh, BK seemed miffed about that in, in the postgame press conference. And uh, I have a feeling he's going to have a nice little phone call with the SEC office monday morning uh preston give us your thoughts well first and foremost this lsu's defense was was pretty much pitiful tonight yes you got a punt on your very first drive and that was a positive sign i said hey look this defense looks like it has a pulse tonight maybe they have turned the corner we talked a lot about how this lsu defense had been improving throughout the season and maybe they were a little bit better but that bar is is absurdly low uh, LSU basically gave up score-worthy drives on eight out of nine possessions tonight. Let's take out the drives that were cut short by half because Alabama had two of those. They had a two-second drive before halftime, and then they had the ball at the end. And then once you realize that they had two field goals that they missed, um, that's eight out of nine drives where, where you basically put them in a position to score. Uh, that That's pitiful. I saw a lot of those same issues when charting film against Missouri early on and Ole Miss where defensive linemen were one to two yards off the ball. What, what, what's going on with that? Um, guys loafing around. Tackling was atrocious tonight. It was one of those nights where you felt like a five-yard gain was a big win. And what's particularly frustrating is – how Alabama was able to get so many of those yards was just letting Jalen Milrow just run wild. You did not, I do not know why you did not have a spy on him all night long. And probably the most sickening, gut wrenching, just, just makes you not want to watch a game of football ever again. 11 of 14 on third down. LSU could not catch a break and get off the field well you, um, you know you you when was it in the first half you you said they were seven for nine or whatever it was and yeah. then you look at lsu's uh stat line and they were zero because they didn't need any third down conversion yeah yeah uh but look it was exactly what we thought it was going to be 
and, and and you're watching the game. You're like, okay, this is going to be, this is gonna, they're going to go down and score with a minute. Uh, uh, they're going to take the ball and and just try to get points before half, and then they get the ball to start the second half. And what if they score there? Boy, it really sets you up to win the football game. And then the wheels just came off. And and even when there were times when you had them in third and long, they converted, um, which really could have been the difference in the game. But it's, you know, look, they've got so many problems on the defensive side of the ball. I've, yeah. I've had my phone blow up all throughout the night. And here's the bottom line. There's just not – there isn't a whole lot of talent on that side of the ball. I don't care what anybody says. Uh you know, I, I know what I said about Savion Jones coming out of high school. Uh, I know what was said about Mason Smith coming out of high school. Uh, certainly you didn't have Wingo tonight. Uh, you had Swinson and, and Jordan Jefferson and, and those guys in there, Jacoby and Guillory. They had to take, they burn a timeout because he wasn't prepared to come into the game. Um, you know, DBs obviously is, is well documented. They just have not recruited on the defensive side of the ball as well as they have on offense and they've got to get that rectified and uh, And Mike, Mike, there's no question that the guys out there on defense right now aren't cutting it. And particularly the fact that a lot of your starters are out, it's particularly apparent. What's really bad about it is as bad as this defense is, you're actually hoping that some of those guys on this bad defense come back for next year, because you know that what's behind them is worse than them. Well, you got to develop, guys. I mean, and part of the problem is, is you keep on doing these rent a player. You don't get any continuity. But I think that's part of the problem. But Mike, I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of the offers that I've you seen have go to throw, out, you have to throw some of this back on Matt House. You can't just see these defense give up. Well, look, there, there is some to come on him. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not... 55 and just say it's just the players. It's not just the players. It, it's definitely some stuff Matt House is doing, and. Again, the very upon a uh, 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 very obvious apparent uh, uh, systemic issue that he's got is how do you how do you let Milro run wild? Gary Williams, like uh, Gary Williams, not, that is not, not true. Spy. That is not true, Gary Williams. You you when you need what you need, and you go in the portal, you're at the mercy of what's in the portal. It's true. What's in the portal isn't good enough for LSU. That's true. Last year it was. This year it wasn't. Uh, Dane Burr's wrong with a super chat. The only bright side is we don't have to listen to Danielson call another LSU game or his boyfriend, New Heisel, at halftime. <laughs> Although I know Dane does love it when they play Sweet Home Alabama and he gets to hear that uh, in Bryant Denny because he is a big Leonard Skinner fan. And um, uh, there you go. Uh, thanks, Dane. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Let's see. All right, let me scroll up and get some of these comments. And uh, guys, as always, please hit that like button if you're enjoying the show or or enjoying the show in, in a bad uh, on a bad night. But uh, hit the like button uh, either way. We're very much appreciative. Um, apathy. I know they were shorthand on the D line, but you really can't bring Matt House back next season. Uh, first, anything new on Jaden? Mark Cumbie asks. Um, we're gonna wait and see. It's uh, it's got a lot of people uh, nervous. Before um, we move on, before we move on, we have to give a shout out to Jaden Daniels. I mean, he played heroically tonight. Um, and yes, he had the interception on a tipped ball. Not 100% his fault there. But I mean, 15 of 24, 219, two touchdowns. And then he ran the ball. He ran hog wild, man. I mean, 163 yards on 11 carries. He had 380 total yards of offense and he made it approximately one play into the fourth quarter uh what an incredible season Jane daniels has had gotta hope for the best because the silver lining for you at this point if he's healthy is well lsu's going to a crappy bowl game and not competing for anything of significance but at least you get to watch Jane daniels put on a show and compete for a heisman trophy uh which if, if he's able to play he should be in the discussion for the Heisman Trophy. I don't. I don't care that they've lost three games. Kinderkamp with a super chat. Thank you for that DBU dial with Derek Stingley Jr. shutting it down after his freshman year. The lack of pride and leadership transferred over to Eli Ricks, and it's done. Um, you know that was another thing we had in our in-game chat on on Tiger Bait uh, during the game. Is you know again talking about 
defensive personnel and where the lapses are and what's not there that you're used to seeing. And the fact of the matter is this state is not kicking out, you know, the Claibornes, uh, the Tredavious Whites, the Eric Reeds, uh, the Tyron Matthews, it's the Stingleys, um, and on and on. Uh, it's just not. Uh, we're going to see now. We, they've got some good corners, uh, I think, in this class. Um, but um, they need some numbers. Um, thank you for that uh, super chat. Uh, uh, and another one from Kendra Kent. Mike, have you ever took a look at how bad the 2020 recruiting class was? 16 transfers, two premature early departures, very little Louisiana kids. Yep. And, you know, and that was the, you know, that's why you – move on and, and bring in a new, a, a new coach. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that class was atrocious. Um, yeah. Did you see that clip? They're talking about uh, Aaron Anderson with Nick yeah, Saban. I did. You'd be playing more if you were here, which I look at that as just him joking. Yeah, with him. Some, some that, guys, some of, I think Crane and Pro tweeted that out and was just thinking that that's just a random LSU player. He's trying to poach. Uh, but he played at Alabama last year, and it's like, okay, whatever. He's just trying to be cute. No, nah, that was a friendly conversation. Um, um, in there. I think uh, but we he, missed a super he, he, He's probably right, though. <laughs> we missed uh, Josh Chapman here. He says, Will Muschamp or Dave Aranda? Uh, well, I will say this. Um, Baylor, the Baylor watch for those of us looking for a new coordinator. They lost to Houston in overtime tonight. 24 25 so baylor drops to three and six with kansas state tcu and west virginia so i'm not saying i'm just saying if he drops those three and he looks like three and nine maybe Baylor pulls that trigger and he is looking for a job you know I, i'm good friends know. with the guys at uh 365 sports and we actually became good friends uh i'd done shows with him before but we really became good friends with the whole kim mulkey uh, it, it was she going to leave Baylor and, and, and I do a ton of shows with them and they're, they're super guys, but I brought up, uh, weeks ago, probably a quarter of the way through the season on one of my segments with them about how people were already starting to toss around Dave Aranda. And if he was in trouble, if they got cut loose, would he come back to, and then, you know, that got them going. And, um, of course they do a national show and a Baylor specific show. And, um, uh, I don't know what uh, Dave Randa and uh, his situation is there, but uh, there is some discussion there that they could make a move in, in Waco. Um, what uh, Randa would do from there uh, is anybody's guess. But to me, when you lose a job like that, you probably either you sit out a year, you go to the NFL, or you, you go back and you take a D.C. job somewhere. Um, we'll see. Uh, you know, I've been in the camp for weeks that Madhouse isn't going anywhere, but um, I'm not going to be so um, definitive in saying that anymore. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I, I do think there's going to be some movement on the staff. The question is how many and, and, and where. All right. Um, Got some more super chats. Yep, oh, there we go. Yeah, Texas Tiger, uh, one of our favorites uh, and a good uh, friend and and longtime Tiger Bait subscriber. Will Woody step up and force these coaching changes? I think that's um, a Brian Kelly decision, don't you think? Yeah, I don't know that Woodward gets to throw his weight around the way he did with Orgeron with BK. That said, you know, as an athletic director, there's ways to say, look, man. What do you want to do? Uh, if you want to make a move, I support you with money. You know, if you need to go out and get a, a this or a that, I've got the money there for you. If, if that's what you decide that, you know, that's how you kind of is an AD. I think that's the way you probably do it. Um, look, BK's <laughs> BK came to LSU for a reason. And if things aren't what he thinks it needs to be to, to, to move forward, then he's going to make a change. Um, he, he he's not hard headed I, I, at all. Um, you know, when he first got hired by LSU, there was a, you know, and I know Preston, you did it. Uh, what was it? His 2014 or 2015 or 
whatever those seasons were. Yeah, I mean, he, he made, made a lot of moves. Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, he um he wasn't afraid. Thank you for that super chat, Texas Tiger, big time. Um TGO one uh, with a super chat. Thank you, says and he th says thank you for the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh trucking with Casper, man. We hadn't seen it in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's so funny <laughs> to listen to people complain about house if, if these players are any good. Like y'all sound like coaches told the players to let Milro run around them on every down. You know, and, and trucking with Casper is kind of saying what I've been saying for weeks. There's just, man, the, the talent there is just not there. Um, I just, man, look, got, I, I don't think these are single faceted issues. When you're talking about no, eight you got out of nine drives, they're, they're getting in field goal range for or touchdowns. That's not that's not one issue. And there's some very obvious things that I, as not a defensive coach, can identify, right, uh, that I, I'm sure show up. Now, I don't think Matt House has been as big a problem as the personnel, but how can how can you watch him give up 700, 500, I, I will say this. 500 there, there's, yards? There's some people out there who really didn't like the way that Jamar Cain was cut loose, and maybe there's some – real negative things behind the scenes in the building uh, as to how that went down and, and who was in Madhouse's ear. Um, you know, if you guys recall throughout that whole deal about who I thought was going to replace Jamar Kane as defensive line coach, remember what I said every, every show, it's going to be a Pete Jenkins disciple. And sure enough, uh, Jimmy Lindsay was that, but when he went down with that medical condition, uh, what a day or two before, fall camp started uh that ad is added to the issues here um i mean look i like some of the things that we've seen since pete jenkins was brought in to try and help uh as an analyst um but it, th that's not enough to overcome uh what, what you're missing in personnel uh man it, by the way wh where's uh where's wit weeks mm. I did not like what we saw out of Omar Spates tonight. He looked like he's not cut out for SEC football. He got blown off the line of scrimmage. He was easily blocked. He didn't have the speed to, to run guys down. And I, I see that as a big problem a lot of times where guys simply do not have the closing speed on this defense to, to make the play uh, or the killer instinct or just the general physicality. Guys get blocked pretty easily on this defense. Um, and that's a problem. It's a problem because you got to start blowing up some blocks and make a play. Um, mm, I, I, I know, I know one thing's for sure with Whit weeks when he's out there, he's busting his ass off and he's playing, he might make a mistake, but it's a mistake going a hundred miles an hour. Not sure. I approve of the Whit weeks being on the bench decision. Absolutely. Um, All right, guys, it's that time. Let's hear from Kenny Haynes. Kenny Haynes is a proud 1989 graduate of LSU Law School with a passion for justice. Kenny stands out as the only lawyer in the state, board certified in both appellate practice and family law. Drawing from 34 years of trial experience, Kenny has navigated the most complex aspects of real people's lives. If you need help in Northwest Louisiana with a family issue, legal issue, or a highly skilled trial attorney, call Kenny, 318-222-2100. And speaking of winning, Kenny would like to recognize our 20 2023 national champions and congratulate coaches Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson. Go Tigers! All right, Kenny Haynes, one of the best people uh, I know and a good friend and one of the best attorneys in all the state of Louisiana. So if you're anywhere in North Louisiana and have any legal issues, uh, give him a call. And of course, he's the unofficial official lawyer of TigerBait.com and he reserves the right to think most clearly for a paying client and we thank him uh for being a a big uh friend and sponsor of of our post game show uh, uh here each week um guy brooks matt house has to go uh yeah i don't know why we, we keep seeing a whole lot of must champ in here that is not good <laughs> um kinder camp uh with another super chat uh thank you for that kinder big time uh ed cooper 20 pat jenkins 20 um, to Cameron Richardson, 20, Bud Clark, Greedy Vance, Jordan Clark at nickel, Jordan Gilbert, Baron Sorrell, 21, Tyrell Raby guys are in state. Uh, those are in state players who either I'm guessing either 
they they must have all committed somewhere else. I I think maybe Pat Jenkins was committed and didn't end up playing, but none of, none of them play for LSU right now. That's that's for sure. Mm. Yep. Mm. Brutal. Yeah, Rumble Road. If you're defending Matt House at this point, then you're a certified clown. There's no develop and nobody on defense cares at all. Um Look, man, I it, it's we 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 had this uh someone uh uh, you know, I, I don't know if uh, you had some of the greatest NFL defensive coordinators in history with this talent. Would, you know, would it be better? Maybe. Um, you know, I, how much of a pass does Madhouse get? He definitely. Uh, gets I don't know. That, I, I, don't know I don't know. I don't know that anybody gets a but, pass. Uh, BK doesn't get a pass. But you have I mean, to be Buck, better than this. I, I think yeah. the best DC in history could absolutely at least limit teams. I mean. I, I, it's not like these are JV football players. I mean, you have some highly recruited guys out there. You have some talented players out there. I mean, Harold Perkins, are you saying he's not talented? I mean, I, I get the issues, but this is worse. than The performance is worse than the talent level, in my opinion. Go ahead with that one. Preston. Preston, who's our best player on defense, and what did he do tonight? Then tell me how House could fix that. I'll tell you exactly how he could fix that trucking. How about a freaking QB spy? How about, how about you've got the most athletic quarterback in the country? Why don't you put the linebacker who runs a 4-3 on him? Don't give me that. Don't give me that. I mean, you can do things better as a coach. You can't. There's not even the coaches will sit here and tell you they could coach better. There, there's not a soul on planet Earth saying that this defense is perfectly coached. They can improve. Now, the bigger problem is the players. I concur. But there's just some glaring issues. You've got guys one to two yards off the line of scrimmage still. Why, why, why are guys not lining up properly? That's coaching, my guy. You, you can't just throw this all on the players. I mean, when you're this bad... It's multifaceted. People want to just point to one issue, and I get it. It's in your nature to want it to be a one-issue problem because as a fan, it's easier to point to, oh, if we can just fix that one thing, we'll be better next time we go out. That's not always the case. You, when things are this bad, it is multifaceted. you got to address all the issues in the room. Um, all right, let's scroll down. Um. Allen Barry, even if Daniels doesn't go out, I still don't see LSU winning with Alabama's defense beginning to step up in the second half, and LSU's defense not. Um, you know, Allen, that was that that was the whole point of <laughs> you had to score a touchdown on every drive. Um, yep. And yeah, the uh, Allen, yeah, the sort of fluky uh, tip pass for an interception gave them a, a short field and a, and a quick score. Um, we saw Bramlett. In the third quarter, I felt that was probably it. And, um, man, some of those third and longs that uh, Mill Road just carved LSU up. And, you know, what's really uh, something else is when you look at the, the box score and um, Mill Road and Daniel's stats are almost identical. It's I mean, eerie. That's creepy. Yeah. Um, but the difference is Daniel had two touchdown pass uh, passes. Uh, all of Milrose were on the, with his legs. Four touchdowns. The first Alabama quarterback in history to have four rushing touchdowns. Tyree Love uh, with a super chat. And thank you uh, for that super chat, by the way, Alan Barry. Uh, Tyree Love with a super chat. Madhouse dropped coverage on third and long. Milrose killed us every time. And when he sent pressure, it was from the linebacker. It was from the DBs, and Alabama adjusted. Uh, BK really had a uh, a look of uh, basically. Uh, he he just knows he's outmanned and and he, he mm -hmm. exhausted. He had he had a look of uh, in in his on his face of exhaustion, trying to figure out how to make the this limited. Uh, personnel on defense uh, make a go of it and try to get some stops. And it's just um, going to be fun to see uh, how this all uh, turns out in the coming weeks, because here's the deal. Um, 
if you're going to finish with a decent defensive line haul, you're going to have to have some answers uh, for some of those recruits that you're trying to get in the portal. Um, they're going to want to know who their defensive line coach is going to be. Is Jimmy Lindsay uh, on the men and, and, and going to be out there coaching in the spring? What What is his prognosis? Uh, we know he's out recruiting and making contact. He's been active on Twitter. We know he's out making calls. Um, but w- what does that mean long term? Um, you know, the, the, and, and if there's any changes on defense, if, if you guys get your way and you got a, he makes a total move for a defense. Well, any new defensive coordinator comes in, if that if that move is made, he's going to want his own defensive line coach, and he's probably going to have some ideas about his DB coaches. So, what does that mean for Cooks and Steeples? Yeah, boy, a lot of people are uh, – Tyler Love, thank you for that. Um, all right, guys, scrolling down. Andy Whitaker, what would this defense look like with 2011's players, and what would this defense look like with last year's players? A lot better. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, the players are are not up to par. I mean, I, and look, I, no, I mean you've too. got an FCS – you've got two, two DBs – from FCS levels starting for your defense this year. That stands out. Yeah, here, here's the other part of it. Uh, at, be honest with yourself and look at your starters tonight and anybody who rotated in and say, I mean, seriously, who are you nominating for an all-SEC first team, an all-SEC second team, or even an honorable mention from this LSU defense? Maybe Makai Wingo. And he didn't have it before he got hurt. He didn't. He wasn't having the year that uh, you thought he was going to have. I'll tell you what, though, he would have helped tonight. That defensive line gave him all night. Did did not keep discipline on him. It, it was a rough night for the defensive line. Yep. Um. Hal Juven says, "Mike, no one." These players transferred for a reason. They didn't magically come better when they hit the portal, says V murdered. Some of them look, seem ma- to have magically gotten worse. Look, uh, look, there's some positions out there where you can really hit the jackpot. Sometimes it's quarterback. LSU knows this, obviously. Uh, we've seen two of the best quarterbacks in LSU history uh, roll into the program in the last five years through the portal. Uh, Matt Mock was a portal a kid, even though there was some there was a pre-portal where he might be, portal kid, yeah. Yeah, where, where he might have been a safety. Um, Mettenberger. It, it was, even talk of that at quarterback wouldn't work out. Mettenberger was uh, a transfer. But, yeah. Danny. Um, but most for the most part, a lot of the other positions, um, and look, there's some circumstances, but most of them are there for a reason because they're not breaking out the depth chart. So that's right. why when I see LSU – uh, going into the portal and and looking at kids that can't make the three deep at some of the schools that they play against in the SEC, how do you expect that to help you get better? Now, I get it. Not everything that you're going for in the portal needs to be a home run or a starter, but you need to have a lot of doubles and, and some triples. Um, uh, some of these guys aren't even singles. All right, uh, Preston, you want to uh, talk about Spectre? Well, of course. Guys, if you see the art behind us, you see the Joe Burrow, Smoking Joe behind him. You see the Dylan Cruz 7 from LSU's championships in those sports. It's because uh, we've got artist Jordan Spectre sponsoring our show this year. And you can see the link behind my right shoulder here, uh, spectresportsart.com backslash the bayou. That's where you can check out all of his special LSU paintings and, of course, even his Drew Brees painting for the Saints fans in the room. The art that Spectre creates is guaranteed to catch the eye of any Tiger fan. And the details are what's going to hold your attention. You may recall the smoking Joe behind uh, Mike there, but he's followed it up with four incredible pieces, including one of Coach Burrow and Coach O, Tiger Stadium, Drew Brees, Dylan Cruz, all the good stuff from the fireworks at Tiger Stadium and Alex Box Stadium and the the Golden Spikes Awards, all the puzzle piece on his sleeve. Just the little details really tell a story. Spectre is always spot on. Artwork is available in quality prints and canvases at any size to fit any room in any budget. Art is straight from the box to the wall. 
everything you need in the box already. Guys, the coolest part I've always found about this stuff is the athletes themselves buy this artwork. In fact, I got a little picture here. I'm going to show you here. If you see the top right-hand corner there, there's Dylan and Jordan Spector buying that same seven piece there. Uh, Joe Burrow's family, of course, hangs the Smoke and Joe piece in their living room. Really cool stuff that the athletes actually engage with. So if y'all want to check out any of these pieces, visit the link in the description of the video or go to just just look at the sign behind me. Just go to buy uh, spectersportsart.com backslash the bio. Make sure to use our exclusive promo code TigerBait10 at checkout for 10% off your first order. Um, guys, you're not going to be disappointed with this work. Go check him out. All right, Preston, you want to you, you, go ahead and run through some comments for me. Okay, gotcha. Let's see who's got a good comment here. Alabama converted on nine out of 11 third downs tonight. It's actually worse than that. It's 11 of 14. And that's one of those particular issues where I look at it, it can't be exclusively a player's issue if you you're getting them for two downs. I mean, you you forced them to third down four, 14 times tonight, right? It's just when it actually matters, when 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 that plays there, you're getting out 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 skeeved at that at that point. So that that's where I think coaching does come into this. Um that being said, I still believe that Matt House is a coach where if you give him 11 elite players or or however many you need to run a defense, 22 um I, I still think he can call a good defense because we saw him do it last year. He called a pretty good defense last year for LSU, and that that defense was far from perfect, but it, it had better players. So I, I still do think Matt House can call a good defense. But that being said, with the personnel he's had, he, he he's definitely having some problems right now. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Maybe I'm old school. Can you lure John Chavis from the USFL? You know, Gene, it's a good point. I'm not big on going back across eras to hire coaches. We saw what happened uh, when you brought in uh, who's Bo Pelini, right? The game has changed so much. Do y'all remember, let's see, 2013, that was right before football just got got put on its head, right? And and John Chavis has had some chances around the SEC. He was at Texas A&M, mm, was okay. Went to Arkansas, not so great. I wonder if he still has the mind to keep up with the evolving game. Um, I, I'm just not big on going back 10 years to hire a coach, man. No, no. Uh, that's 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 done and gone. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why he got phased out was um, uh, these new offenses and, you know, and what he wanted to run. Um Bo Jack right. says defensive recruiting is embarrassing. He says, "Well, is that get? Do you think that they're bringing in? We'll, we'll, <laughs> look, man. I, I, look, uh, look. We're, we're going to see what happens with Kai Bates. Obviously, <coughs> a lot of schools are trying to see what they can do there. Uh, McBride and others are some absolute mm -hmm. studs, but the, they need some more. And I think they're going. They need to get a couple of more in, in the portal. But yep. again, um." You know, there was a time there where we, we were sitting there charting the success that LSU was having in the portal, and um, they had a pretty darn good hit rate. And I don't know um, over time if we're going to have a, a, a hit rate number that if you hit that certain number on your transfer portal, uh, you're doing extremely well. Um, but there was a time there where it was obvious that LSU was doing better than most in the portal. Um as far as them actually panning out as football players once they were here. Um, just because you sign the biggest group from the portal um, or or you win some of the battles doesn't mean that that's going to correlate to those guys being uh, what you need uh, to be elite in the SEC because it's, uh, it's obvious that uh, a lot of these guys are not that. Yeah, I, I think McBride's going to be a big help next year. Kai Bates, love him out of Orlando. Um, I like the Louisiana kids they're bringing in though. Joel Rogers, a West Feliciana track kid. He's he's a stud, man. And then Jawan Johnson, we see what he's doing for LCA. Jawan Johnson is going to probably has a chance to start right away. Uh, yeah, of course you. He plays quarterback in high school. You you worry that, that maybe there's some transition there. Um, but McBride from Denham Springs is an absolute beast. Um, 
it ain't going to take him long to see the field. PJ Woodland, Wallace Foster, Bernard Causey. I mean, these are all guys who are coming. I mean, those are all just defensive backs I named, right? And, you know, one of the things I discuss a lot is how how your class composition works out. I love that you're bringing in that many DBs when you, when you need guys because the simple odds of it are the more guys you're bringing in, the more likely you're going to get a hit out of – I mean, if you don't get a hit on seven guys – uh you're doing something very wrong in recruiting it just that doesn't happen gene smith with a super chat thank you for that gene if you have a comment you didn't post one i'll, I'll look for it uh, just add it and, and we'll, we'll try and find it um kenny with a question how come our center doesn't Oof. know the snap count center had a rough night yep and um low snap brian kelly Dude. brian kelly uh talked about him and and defended him tonight and talked about uh, how good he is um you know, i was kind of doing multiple things and i need to go back and listen to exactly what he was saying but um yeah th there were some mistakes tonight that um look i think if you had any semblance of a defense even the mistakes that you had on offense and the numbers that you put up i mean people were wondering would this lsu offense come close to 400 yards tonight against Alabama and I mean it was a typical Jaden Daniels outing tonight it's just um he gets knocked out uh you have some key things that happen there um yeah I hate to single out Mason Taylor with the drop um, mm, and, God, again, uh, and, and again it hurt, uh though. man I still don't understand the running back rotation you mean either uh, it seems like Logan Diggs has been your best back consistently, and he gets eight carries tonight. And you're putting out John Emery Jr. out there. And Caleb Jackson, two uh, terrible what, what snaps. Was what was that? A shuffle pass to Caleb Jackson? Yeah, it was one of those. You know, the, it's a jet. Hey, sweep, why why aren't you trying to get Caleb pass. Jackson north south? Give him some of those Logan Diggs runs. Yeah, it's like it's almost like they're trying to be too cute with those players when they come in the game, like Aaron Anderson. Like they're trying to use him on yeah, anytime bubble screen you see stuff. Aaron Anderson, Aaron Anderson, or Caleb Jackson, it's it's trying to be too cute. Well, and it's almost made it predictable at this point. Not almost, it is predictable. You see them coming in the game, you know exactly what you have to defend with that player. Okay, watch the bubble screen here. Like, how are you going to catch him off guard? If they know exactly what's coming on, I mean, you're Connor Stallions in yourself. Uh, Dylan with a super chat. Thank you for that. De defense was hot garbage, as y'all already discussed. Props to Toviano holding his own, though. A lot of nice comments about Toviano. Yeah. Uh, from, What'd you think uh, of Toviano tonight? Yeah. I, I, I like what some of what I saw as well. Um, I think he did a good job in coverage. He did have some problems in run support, though. In fact, one of the touchdowns was okay, one so You where... know what? Uh, and now that you bring that up, um, of course, it was all Milrow. Right. Uh, but look at Jermaine Burton's stat line. 29 yards receiving. Hey, that's a good point. I, I just I just knew all week that dude would have 180 yards. Yeah. Um, yeah, so enjoying the show, uh, guys. Hoping we break the season up for losing streak when I'm in Vegas next year. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Vegas, the LSU women's basketball team touched down in Vegas today, and uh, they'll be playing uh, Colorado uh, Monday night. Um, thank you again, Dylan. Uh, Kenny Haynes with a super chat pre snap penalties mm, in the center killer. did as much to stop us as them. Mm. Yeah, even when you have those, um, and you had a couple of drops by receivers, and you're like, Here we go, and it's third and 12. And Jaden Daniels would bail you out, yeah, he did time and time again, yeah, and, and he did it until the bitter end. Um, you and know, how many and times did Jaden Daniels actually bail out? the LSU coaches because of who they're targeting on plays and who's in the game. That's a good point. Yeah. I, it, it, you know, until the bitter end, I mean, you had one drive, I mean, it's, it's 28, 21. Then you have one drive where it gets completely stalled out by penalties. And then you have one drive where a batted ball gets intercepted. And it's like, that's your margin of error for this LSU team. And then, of course, he's knocked out on the very next play after that. It's like, and that's it. That's the ball game. Um, it, it's it's a sad circumstance. You find yourself in eight penalties for 60 yards. Um, 
Kent Jones, thank you for coming in. No comment, just showing my support. Well, I appreciate you hey, for thanks coming for being in with us, guys. Uh, also, to uh, our show, hit the like button again, but also hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Uh, we've been growing by leaps and bounds. I think we're about to hit twenty four thousand in the next week or two, um, and it's a lot. Of, to, thanks to a lot of you guys. But I'm, I'm also looking at the back end and our analytics, and it's like while we're growing at a good pace and we, but some of our biggest view uh, content, whether it's uploads or live shows, it still shows that like 60% of y'all are not subscribed. And um, I think sometimes because people just don't have, haven't set up a Google account yet. Um, but dude, once you get that Google account, uh, you're going to be able to get alerts uh, when we upload or, or if we go live and we're loading stuff on our YouTube channel daily. Um, and we've got a lot more coming your way. Um, thank you for that, uh, Kent. Um, while we're talking about penalties and I see we got another good con. Wait, thank you, Mike. These D linemen are not even average. Better start evaluating D tackles as ain't no dogs. Uh, yeah. Defensive line was a, a brutal tonight. No pressure. No, no push. Uh, the four man rush basically did nothing for you. Uh, Savion Jones had a batted down ball. I'll, I'll say this: Savion Jones probably paid one of his better games, but man, these mobile quarterbacks have just been brutal to LSU all year long. Trucking with Casper follows that up. I'm just honest; these guys on defense are trash, and it's just facts. Um, mm. I'm surprised nobody brought up the targeting controversy yet. Yeah, I think we talked about that a little bit earlier in the show. It's just that that's just kind of par for the course, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you knew coming to this one when you saw Tennessee at Alabama last week or two weeks ago, and Alabama had one penalty the whole game for five yards. Um, you knew that coming into this thing. Um, I think Devin White would like to have a word with the SEC over <laughs> over, over, over his uh, after what he saw tonight. Um well, I thought LSU might catch a break because the, the lead ref was named Daniel Gotro. I was like, hey, did LSU catch a break? Um, now, worth noting, guys, the main thing about the targeting call versus the roughing the passer call, uh, it had no impact on the game. Okay, If you call targeting, yes, Dallas Turner's ejected. Does that really help you? No, it didn't matter what was going on. You got the 15 yards. Z virtually well, it's zero really, it's really It's really going to matter if we find out tomorrow or Monday that uh, that there's something severe with Jaden Daniels. And so knock on wood, yeah, uh, keep him, me in your thoughts and prayers. Because, um, uh, you know, look, I it, the situation was what it was. Um, but uh, And even though uh, Sunbelt Billy <laughs> lost to Arkansas today, <laughs> um, look, you still need to try and finish out this season and not get to, to four losses, right? Right. You'd like to finish this one out at nine and three. And um, um, I mean, you want to compete for 10 wins every season, right? And yeah. You go nine and three and win a ball. I, I don't know that. I don't, I don't know that I, with this defense, I don't know that you do that with Nussmeyer the rest of the way. We'll see. I, I like who buster. LSU's got left on the schedule. You got Texas A&M and Florida and Georgia State. How many of you guys think that that was not targeting? It was strictly a personal foul. Is that what yeah. Kenny's saying? That is what Kenny's saying. <clears throat> I've heard some people say that, but <clears throat> regardless, I believe it was targeting. I literally looked up the rules for targeting immediately after. It's like that fits the definition to me. Ultimately, does I mean the difference is Dallas Turner gets ejected. Does that really make anything better? Was no. It, was it? Uh, but it helps Alabama. Us. As soon as I said what I said, was it? Uh, <laughs> did you think music would reply that quickly? <coughs> oh, he was he was already commenting this ten minutes into the show. Uh, I saw it earlier. I was like, oh man, I saw I saw oh, a little bit too much of fire tonight. I, I thought I saw a little bit too much of him throwing off his back foot, falling away yeah. like a, a fadeaway jump shot. Yeah, he he. You know, I, I thought he had some good throws and he had some bad throws. Ultimately, and he had, and, and and I will I will defend him on this. He had some drops too. 
Uh, ultimately, well, and, and I mean, Malik Neighbors dropping that final throw, that was a hell of a throw by him on, on that yep. last throw. But it's almost like the chemistry is just clearly off at this point where the chemistry with Jaden and the people and his receivers are just superior. It, it's elite chemistry, right? And then you throw in Nussmeyer, who's just such a vastly different passer. Uh, it's hard to judge someone when you plug them, you know, in the SEC on the road at Alabama down 14 points in the fourth quarter. I mean, how can you truly judge a player? Um, five of 10, 53 yards, didn't see anything in either direction. I, I mean, he's clearly not as good as Jane Daniels. Uh, absolutely not at this point, but it is tough to evaluate him uh, based on that, especially no practice reps either. Just got thrown in there. Spectrum well care. Mike BK took over rebuild. He absolutely did. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, that, and that, and that's a good point, isn't it? Uh, how many uh, scholarship players played in that bowl game? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. And if you yep. would have said at that point, with this thirty-nine that he's inheriting, he's going to play in the SEC championship game in his first year, and maybe he goes nine and three his second year, you would say absolutely, we'll take it. Right, at one hundred out of a hundred times. But you go, but you do what you do last year, and you beat Alabama, and I think it uh, made the expectations go even go even further. Um, and I don't think it helped that uh, all of us in the media, and I'm including myself, um, probably bought into. Uh, I'm not gonna say probably, definitely bought in uh, to a lot of these. Uh, transfer portal guys being better than they were yep i thought omar spates was going to be one of the best linebackers in the sec um i thought a lot of these transfer guys were going to be better than they are yeah um look man as, as sick as lsu fans are right now um it was at alabama on the road and um would you rather be an aggie fan tonight <laughs> a, a gator fan um well you know we'll one of the things uh would you rather be a michigan state fan one of the things that stands out for me people harassing you know everybody's gonna give brian kelly shit every time he loses right would you rather have any other candidate for the job maybe lane kiffin maybe lane kiffin's the one you're looking at and thinking well i should have brought him in but i mean look at what happened to mel tucker i mean is lincoln riley really doing any better I mean, honestly, I mean, look at how many points USC. I mean, USC and LSU are the same exact team. I hope they get paired, paired together in a bowl game uh, this year. That'd be a lot of fun. You thought a linebacker from Philly that played at Oregon State was going to be good? Yeah, he had 100-plus tackles last year. I mean, he was a beast. It's not like he's playing, you know, in an FCS level or something, man. I mean, that's, that's Pac-12. Pac-12 is – and look at what the Pac-12 is doing this year. They're, that's a legit conference, man. Mm. Yeah. I thought he was going to be a lot better than he is. And, and look, I think if you're being honest, you did too. All right. Let me scroll up and get some more. Um, Bama said it was a clean hit. Bama fan said Turner laid one hell of a hit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you feel that complaining way. about targeting is like complaining about your Starbucks order soft. Uh, so we got a share of Alabama fans in here having some fun tonight. Well, let's, let's just tell them something real quick. Cause, um, this is probably one of Alabama's worst rosters I've seen in 12 years or whatever. And hell of a job by coach Saban to put this, this squad together eight and one, 6-0 and in the SEC, almost certainly going to lock up the division when Ole Miss loses next week. This is one of Coach Saban's best coaching jobs he's ever done. So credit to Coach Saban, greatest coach of all time in the job he's doing in Alabama because I, I, I think this was uh, – I think a lot of coaches would have tanked and gone, you know, 8-4 and four this year or whatever. Let me ask you this. How many starters on Alabama's offense do you think would start at LSU that they would Oof. sit somebody down? Oh, man. Maybe an interior lineman or two. 
I don't know who they have in there at their guards positions, but, but that's pretty telling, guards, right? Um, that's pretty telling where you're, where you can also maybe go with it's either zero, one, or two. Yeah, I wouldn't take more than three. Mm -mm. I mean, all uh, maybe a third wide receiver comes out. May, may, maybe Jermaine Burton is your third wide receiver for LSU, but defensively. And this is not anywhere near a typical Alabama defense. If I say the same thing on that side of the ball, I'm not sure you don't go 11, Mike. I, I, I just off the top of my head, without comparing the rosters, and 11 looking, except except Harold Perkins. I'm 10. not, Mike. I, I I'd have to study Alabama's linebackers. I I can't tell you with 100 confidence. I'm taking Harold Perkins still. Probably I am keeping him, but. I can't tell you 100%. I'd have to look at who Alabama has a linebacker and whatnot. But I, I, I wouldn't you, be shocked if it's nine. Nine turns out to be the number. Look, look, even your best defenses are giving up a lot of yards. That's the nature of college in, in, in the game right now. But there is a big disparity on that LSU roster in the quality of the players on the offensive side of the ball versus defense. And it's I mean, it's it's night and day. Um, I, I I'm looking at who started for LSU tonight, and you're you had to say, all right, project uh, draft picks. I mean, I, let's say Wingo was healthy. I don't know how high Wingo would go. Uh, Harold Perkins, I think, is going to be a very very high pick. But other than that. I don't see any D DBs playing at the next level. Perkins is the only linebacker. Maybe, well, well, maybe some of the young guys. You know, I I know you think DBs could come on early, and I, but I, I will say this: I, I do, I do think Penn plays good at times. Penn play, yeah, and he had a really big hit tonight. Um, but you know, like like Taviano, Jeremiah Hughes, uh, Ashton Stamps, those guys. I'm not writing them off. In fact, I think a big part of LSU's success moving forward will be to continue to recruit guys back to your program the next year. In a year where you can hit up the transfer portal like it's tender, um, <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to start keeping your guys on so you can develop them and build some continuity. I think part of your problem is this plug and play you know, rent a player system that you got going with the portal. Shimona V, how is it physically possible to have a jaw injury and it'd be a clean hit? Come on, man. And he drove him into the ground. Comics like that is the reason why I can't take some of these Bamas seriously. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that and that's one of those deals where BK will get on the phone with the uh, SEC guy and and it'll be, yeah, we talked about it, but he can't discuss it. And um yeah. Andy Whitaker, Mike has a great point. Would you you would trade nearly all of the defensive players? Now would you honestly trade DCs? Well, they have Kevin Steele, who was all who, you know here at was, one point. He struggled here in one year. And now that 2015 defense had a lot of coverage busts, but I mean, that 2015 defense was night and day better than the defense you've got out there. Uh, I don't think Kevin Steele – I mean, yeah, he gave up – he had the 70-point game against West Virginia in the Orange Bowl in 2011 when he was a Clemson, but I don't think he's ever fielded a year-long defense that was was this bad. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I, I might take uh, – you could convince me, Matt House, over Kevin Steele. You could convince me because I – again, I really do feel like if you give Matt House 11 dudes, he'll put out a good defense. Absolutely. All right. Uh, guys, Team Koala Installation of Baton Rouge are your residential and commercial energy efficiency experts. Tim DeSell and his staff, folks, are absolutely amazing. And uh, so the approaches Koala provides not only help you reduce energy bills and maintain a more comfortable living environment, but can also help reduce airborne allergens, water condensation issues, wear and tear on your HVAC system, and even lengthen the life of your roof shingles. The Koala team provides existing homeowners with a doctor's diagnosis of your home's energy efficiency and can offer several strategies to help you stay more comfortable and save money on energy bills all year long. 
Koala has the capacity to tackle large spray foam projects and new home construction while being available to help everyday homeowners get some relief from South Louisiana's extreme weather. As an added bonus, most of Koala's projects qualify for federal income tax credits. So give Koala a call today, 225-457-1001, to schedule your free energy efficiency assessment. And please tell them you heard about them right here on TigerBait.com, and they'll give you 7% off on your free project. And I got to tell you, I was in a uh, house uh, last week. A friend of mine's building a house, and they spray foamed their attic. And um, it was cooler in the attic than it was inside the house because of that spray foam that basically covers up all the beams and everything from the, the joists. I, I couldn't believe how cool it was inside an attic. Um, it's amazing. Call Koala. Um, the great Matt House is the Matt Canada of defense. <laughs> Holy smokes. Have you seen all the Matt Canada memes this year about fire Canada, blame Canada going on with the Steelers? I find it hilarious all that that's going on with him right now. Um, whoa, no, he's not. Who was that kid who transferred? Who was the kid who transferred from Nichols in 2020 who just got put in a bad spot and just got oh, roasted man. every time? Darren Evans, maybe? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not going to say that. Trusting trucking with Casper says Preston. If Nick Saban was de defensive coordinator, would our defense be better? And by how much coming into this game, they gave up 306 yards a game compared to our 395. And doesn't Alabama have better players? Isn't Alabama's defense ranked 15th in the country? I mean, and you're saying 306 versus 395 as if that's like a small margin. Uh, yes, they have better players. Number one, isn't your defensive coordinator supposed to be partially responsible for bringing in quality players? That's part of it. Uh, and and number two, um, I mean, dude, he didn't play a quarterback spy on Jalen Milrow and got eat up all night. How can you not look at that and say, that's at least a little bit on coaching. I, I don't under like, are you arguing that Matt house called a perfect game? Like, like, cause, cause, cause again, we keep on getting these supporting Matt house comments here and I'm not saying he's he's just abysmal and it's 100% his fault or anything like that. I feel like I've been pretty fair to him, uh, especially compared to what a lot of people around LSU are saying. Um, are you trying to argue he's, he, he called, he's a really good DC and, and called a perfect game. Uh, cause, cause that's what it kind of, when you keep on trying to come to defense, that's kind of what it starts to sound like. I think there's some problems. I think when your defense is this bad, I think when you give up 700 yards against Ole Miss, when you give up 500 yards against Alabama, when eight, of nine, eight out of your nine drives are score-worthy drives, I think everybody's the problem because you stink. You're one of the worst in the history of this program. You stink. It's terrible. Everybody involved is a problem at that point. I don't think it's one guy. So so I, 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 what are you getting at here? You know what I mean? Look, they, they've got a lot of problems. Um, there's some coaching issues there. Um, but again, you're, 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 you're not talking about a defense that's, um, has, a, a half a dozen guys that are either first, second or honorable mention all SEC by any, but by coaches or media fire three, four, four, nine there. there in fact, there isn't, there isn't going to be a single LSU player, I think on first or second team defense. Um, postseason. Uh, I get all that. I get all that. Yeah. But can you honestly say that that's the only problem? Can you, with a straight face, can you say that the only problem this defense has? That is the biggest problem. Certainly. That, but is it the only problem? We've been saying, no, we've no, been no, saying no, that. No, there, there's a problem not having a defensive line coach. I mean, absolutely. You got guys two yards off the freaking ball. I think there's a coaching problem there for sure. You've got guys loafing around. You've got guy poor tackling. I mean, yes, yes. The 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 Joe the Jimmys aren't there. The you know it's Jimmy and Joes and X's and O's and the Jimmy and Joes aren't there. That's abundantly obvious. But that doesn't mean that there's not some things you can do to mitigate the problem uh, that we we've discussed tonight. Mike is Nathan Smith still not 100% from his injury. Uh, look, I don't know if he's 95 or 98 or, you know, with, is he 100% from the injury? But 
it's now in in November and the 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 nicks and bruises and the stiffness from playing SEC football every week is that wearing on him? May probably it's does that to every football player. But um, I think the problem with Mason Smith, Smith is he's six foot seven and his pad height's too high. Yeah, and um, you know we can have that debate whether he would have been better off being an offensive lineman at the next level or not. Um, that'll get uh, people riled up when you start talking that way. Um, you know, it's one thing to bull rush at the high school level and maybe get away with it uh, some of the time at the co- collegiate level, but if you over overrun a play um, when you when you're that tall, how easy it is it to uh, reverse course and hit and and shed a blocker and, and get going the other way. Mason Smith is not playing with explosiveness right now. He's not shredding blocks. He, he's he's really just kind of eating up a lot of space. He, he's he's kind of hitting his guy going forward and just not getting off blocks very quickly. I don't I don't see a ton of moves out of him. I, I think Mason Smith is a guy who very much so needed, uh, especially coming off an injury and not having played but ten games during his entire LSU career. Uh, really needed a defensive line coach to give him, you know, intimate attention and, and, and help out. But unfortunately he didn't receive that. I think he's a guy who would be benefit from returning another year and hopefully getting a coach that can work with him a full season. Cause right now he, he he's not playing very disciplined, frankly. And I do think he's hurt banged up. I talked to him two weeks ago after the army game and he walked me through about how, you know, yeah, his injury for the preseason It hurts, but he's playing through it. And he talked to me about how he's dislocated his finger. So yeah, he's banged up, but I, I, it's more than that. Kent Jones, BK needs to be sure to get focused and went out for sure. Another loss would look pretty bad. Um, Like we were saying earlier, you need to finish nine and three. And if you can get that 10th win in a bowl. Yeah. And here's the other part of it, man. Look, if you're not in the playoffs, whether you're going to a capital one or a Texas bowl, does it really matter? Not really. It doesn't. It Not doesn't really. Matter. I mean, you get a little bit more money for the program if you go to a no, bigger but it doesn't, goal, That doesn't but matter either. No, not really. It's like three hundred thousand dollars. It, it goes more. to the SEC and it gets distributed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're not it in really the playoff, doesn't it matter. doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, um, it, it 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 will certainly look a lot better. You know what? Um, you know what matters more than that. But I will say this. Let me let me add to this. Let's say hypothetically, and I hope that's not the case. Um, because when you get your third loss, you, you're, you're no longer playing to possibly be the first two loss team. Um, and can you get to Atlanta? That's, that's gone now. Um, so would it be the end of the world? And, and, and I, and I want Jaden Daniels to finish out, but you know, it, it might be a darn good thing to start seeing some more of Nuss Meyer because he's going to be your guy next year. And it'd be nice to get him some experience and start building towards next year because, like uh, someone said earlier in the chat, you do open against USC in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> it's it's time to break that losing streak in, in home openers. Um, uh, because look, it, you start looking at personnel for next year. Um, uh, I, I'm not uh, ready to, to say anything better than than eight and four, nine and three for next year, based on what you know is coming back. Well, and let's be honest, if Jaden Daniels is out, that's just a gut wrenching blow to LSU and LSU fans um, being the most enjoyable thing of this team this year. But you also get to evaluate Nussmeyer if he goes in and he gets a few games as a starter. Is he your guy next year? Or do you need to look in the transfer portal to see who else is there? Because, I mean, sometimes there's some very high quality quarterbacks in the transfer portal. I feel like quarterback is the position. Of all the positions where you can find the best quality transfers, it typically is your quarterback spot. Well, regardless of whether Nussmeyer is clearly the number one, you have to go to the transfer portal get a quarterback. That's just a fact. Um, Andy Whitaker with a super chat. Thank you for that. Last year, everyone was applauding House for doing well with lower talent than we are used to. This year, he has worse talent, and everyone is saying he sucks. Makes no sense. I mean, that's gonna. I mean, Andy, that's just the nature of the beast. When you feel, you know what? That's why people were getting mad at me a couple of weeks ago when they're saying, "Mike, you're crazy if if you think Madhouse 
isn't getting fired. Um, I don't know that Brian Kelly looks at Matt House and is saying that what he's seeing on defense is because Matt House is a is a is is an idiot and doesn't know what he's doing. I don't think he sees that. No, and Brian Kelly's come to Matt House's support a couple times. Again, well, but but sometimes when you do that, that's the kiss <coughs> of death. I, I, I think most will argue that if you give Matt House a stacked, loaded defense with a ton of studs on it, I think he will do just fine as your coordinator, right? I think I think he's having some issues right now coaching bad portion personnel, and some of his flaws as a coordinator are exacerbated by by poor personnel. Gee, bam, my boy, imagine mural in 2024. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> look, he he's uh, – you think about where Alabama was early in the season and, and after the spring, and did they have a quarterback or they didn't? And he wasn't the answer uh, six, seven weeks ago. And look how far he's come. So – and he certainly seems like a, a very likable – he seems like a very likable kid Daddy, too. I love the kid, man. He's fun. Yep. Um, I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to say. There. Music says if a transfer quarterback ends up starting, that will show future high school quarterbacks that B can't develop them and won't ever start them. Plus your backup <clears> will be <throat> just Ricky and Hurley because Nuss will leave. Um, Boy, isn't the second point going to First of all, Nussmeyer didn't sign. Brian Kelly didn't sign Garrett Nussmeyer. He was here already. Um, That's true. And second of all, um, you know, there's some guys that are what they are and they, they have a ceiling. Um, and I'm not saying that Nussmeyer is not going to be the guy, but you, you want somebody, you, you, it's the point of getting a transfer quarterback is not because you don't think Nussmeyer can be the guy, um, but you would like someone who's good enough to come in and compete and push him and maybe beat him out for the job. Um, but definitely because you absolutely need a, a surefire number two quarterback. Um, you know, I, I, I think as, as much as A&M fans um, thought they had a really good one in Max Johnson, I don't think they're too happy right now and thinking that uh, they had as good of a number two as they thought they did. All right, I got three things on this. Number one, you do not make personnel decisions that can cost you wins or losses on your current team based on how it might impact future recruits because for every recruit that might get scared off whatever nonsense theory about quarterbacks, continuity, whatever, okay, there's other recruits who are like, man, they lost two more games. I don't want to play for them anymore. Number two, uh, your your theory about okay, so so you think Nussmeyer not completing and transferring out is, is is the straw that breaks the camel's back here? It wasn't that LSU hasn't had a quarterback sign and finish his career at LSU since Jarrett Lee and Jordan Jefferson wrapped up their careers in 2011. That's not it. It, it, it was that it was that Nussmeyer transferred out. It was that Nussmeyer couldn't do it. It wasn't every single quarterback since. 2011 um and third off your scenario talking about well then you're be left with the transfer guy and just ricky uh, collins and colin right um well i mean if you don't take in a transfer portal guy you're you're right back there anyway so uh on three levels that's just kind of a silly take guys drip iv get over and talk to them they've got semaglutide right now if you've been struggling to lose weight, maybe you've heard of weight loss injections from a friend or family member, this is your sign to check it out. Drip IV offers medically assisted weight loss with semaglutide at both their Baton Rouge and Lafayette locations. Call them to book your consultation. Miss Brittany, who you see right there on the screen, uh, she will get you set up. Tell you heard about them on Tiger Bait. They would love to speak with you. Call them at 225-256-3634. Uh, they are now open on Saturdays and Sundays. If you have a hangover and you're dehydrated, uh, head over there tomorrow. Uh, if this uh, Alabama loss uh, sets you back and uh, you drank too much, uh, go get hooked up tomorrow to an IV, and uh, they will get you uh, hooked up and, and and on your way and and go get you a big brunch afterwards. N located next to Sushiyama and Iverstein's in Perkins Crossing on the corner of Perkins and Essence. And um, – 
always convenient for walk-ins. And also in Lafayette, off Ambassador Capri uh, in Cordoba, in the medical office building on the right. Drop in, check them out. And, um, man, I've got uh, – I say it to every show, I've got so many friends on semaglutide losing amazing amounts of weight. Uh, none of their pants fit them and getting healthy. And uh, the stuff just works. It's um, – I know a lot of you guys watching the show and gals know somebody that's using it and it just works. All right. Um, anything else you want to add before we head out? No, nah, man, we'll be back Monday night. Got Zach joining me, make, made sure to confirm he'll be back from Tuscaloosa. So uh, we'll have a good show. I'm probably going to do another film breakdown of what really went wrong with LSU's defense because I, I you know, I hate talking out of my my you know what not knowing exactly what went wrong and not having a tally so we'll probably do that so if y'all have it make sure to hit subscribe to the channel hit that bell get the notifications when we go live you can set it to live only uh to where if you don't want notifications for every video you could get it just live and we only do three live shows a week we're not going to bombard you like like you know there, there there's some certain channels that will put out you know 15 20 shows a week we're, we're not going to be bad like that guys we, when we do a live show we try to you know make make it worth your notification all right guys uh thanks for tuning in thanks everybody for the super chats uh and, and supporting us here at tiger bait uh, Brian Lazar's uh, post-game uh, analysis is already up on the site, as is Preston's post-game story. And uh, on our channel, we've got Nick Saban post-game video. We've got Brian Kelly post-game video. Uh, and we've got more coming your way. Preston on Monday night. Buddy Sanji and I are Wednesday night uh, back on schedule after doing a Tuesday night show this past week. And um, go to TigerBait.com and subscribe. we got a lot of recruiting stuff coming your way as well. Uh, we were out at three ball games uh, Thursday and Friday night this past week, and uh, we got playoffs coming. So we got a lot of recruiting stuff coming your way, uh, and not just uh, in football. Uh, we've got some women's basketball and men's basketball recruiting stuff uh, next week as well coming your way on TigerBait.com. All right, guys, good night. Thanks for thanks everybody watching the show and tuning in. Spread the word.